Hello. Tarmac is the UK's leading sustainable buildings, materials and construction solution business. We employ 6,000 people at various locations across the UK. We're a CRH company and CRH is a leading global buildings materials group employing over 89,000 people at around 3,900 locations worldwide. Tarmac is part of CRH Europe Heaviside. Safety is an important element of our performance, one that impacts all of us. We can all so easily contribute by doing things the tarmac way, every time. Simply talking, challenging and supporting each other will help keep us all safe. While you're with us, we want you to let us know if you see anything from a safety, health and environmental point of view that you feel concerned about. We will take it seriously and you will get the right response from us. We do welcome your input. Tarmac prides itself on working to high standards. It's vital to us that everyone goes home in the same state that they started the day in. Work safe, home safe. If someone is injured or when things do go wrong, we will do everything we can to find out why it happened and make sure it doesn't happen again. Unsafe acts and behaviours will not be tolerated. Which is not allowed, is it? No, it's not. No, you did, you did well. While you're with us, we want you to follow three principles that we firmly believe in. Culture. A belief that all injuries and incidents are preventable. The reporting of near hits is welcomed and will be responded to positively. Learning. All incidents are appropriately investigated and the key learning points shared to make sure that they don't happen again. Standards and rules. A set of clear, non-negotiable standards and rules, including the 16 life-saving rules developed by CRH, are in place to ensure your safety at all times. They are a set of minimum mandatory requirements that focus our efforts on the areas where we know serious accidents can occur. 1. Contractor safety management 2. Machinery safety 3. Energy isolation 4. Electrical safety 5. Site transport 6. Forklift safety 7. Mobile phones 8. Heavy goods vehicles on public roads 9. Construction project safety 10. Road surfacing and repair operations 11. Lifting operations. 12. Work at height. 13. Work in confined space. 14. Lone remote working. 15. Explosive safety. And 16. Process safety. At Tarmac, we use these 16 life-saving rules to ensure consistency of our health and safety and environmental standards across all our operations. Life-saving rule number one, contractor safety management. All companies that work for Tarmac must have completed a pre-qualification check. If you've not had this check, please let us know. As an approved contractor, you must ensure that a risk assessment and safe system of work is completed for the work to be undertaken. Risk assessments must be completed with the involvement of those doing the work and must be specific to the task, not generic. The control measures must be clear and specific and not open to interpretation. If there is a significant hazard, it must be adequately controlled using the hierarchy of controls as a principle. The risk assessment should be supported by a safe system of work which must detail any specific competencies required, specialist equipment and how the stages of the task must be completed. It should include any emergency procedures for the task. Make sure you understand the requirements of the risk assessment and safe systems of work and that you are able to comply with all the controls stated. If you cannot comply or you're unclear, you must speak to your line manager, who then may need to speak to tarmac site management. All machinery and equipment to be used is legally compliant, suitable for the work that is to be completed and is serviced and maintained to a safe condition. 
Only competent personnel are provided for the work that is to be undertaken. All personnel are medically fit and not under the influence of drugs or alcohol while working on a tarmac site. Adequate insurance is in place for the work that is to be undertaken. You provide and use the PPE required by the safe system of work and that this complies with the minimum standard required by tarmac. Any changes to the agreed working procedure, including changes to the personnel, must be notified to the responsible tarmac manager before the work continues. No work may be subcontracted without written authorization from tarmac. If you are a subcontractor, you must be able to provide evidence of this. Tarmac do have a process to routinely review the performance of contractors. Life-saving rule number two, machinery safety. There have been a significant number of fatal and serious incidents involving machinery. To prevent them, all dangerous parts of machinery must be protected by a fixed guard which would require an engineering tool to remove it. All interlock systems, including pull wires and emergency stops, must be connected to a fail-safe circuit and be tested monthly by a competent person. All emergency trip cords and buttons must open a pair of contacts that are electrically connected to a fail-safe circuit. And when reset, the machine must not restart automatically. There must be documented evidence that all emergency trip cords and emergency stop buttons are tested at least every six months. All conveyor belts must be fitted with pre-start warning alarms, both audible and a light warning system. These machinery safety rules must be followed at all times. Life-saving rule number three, energy isolation. People have been seriously hurt or even killed after becoming trapped in machinery by failing to follow the correct isolation procedures. We use the principle of lockout, tagout, tryout, or latoto. It's vital you follow this procedure when isolating machinery or equipment. Energy isolation relates to the following sources of energy. Electrical, pneumatic, hydraulic, mechanical, gravitational, thermal, residual energy in machine component parts, material flow. You must comply with the site procedures for energy isolation. You cannot work on equipment unless you have locked out the equipment with a personal padlock and an approved HASP, applied your tag under the control of the tarmac isolation owner. The tryout stage has been completed to ensure the equipment has been isolated correctly. That any stored energy has been released. That equipment that can move has been secured. And when you've completed the work, you must make sure all guards and safety systems have been replaced. Remember, live working is not permitted on any electrical system. Don't take the risk. Live diagnostic testing must be authorised in writing. You must comply with the site procedures for energy isolation. You cannot work on equipment unless you have locked out the equipment with a personal padlock and an approved HASP, applied your tag under the control of the tarmac isolation owner. The tryout stage has been completed to ensure the equipment has been isolated correctly. That any stored energy has been released. That equipment that can move has been secured. 
And when you've completed the work, you must make sure all guards and safety systems have been replaced. Remember, live working is not permitted on any electrical system. Don't take the risk. Live diagnostic testing must be authorised in writing. Life-saving rule number four, electrical safety. Many people have been electrocuted or burnt whilst working on electrical equipment. To ensure your safety, and ours, before you bring any electrical equipment onto site, you must provide, as a minimum, an inventory of the equipment to be used, including the ingress protection, IP rating. Confirmation that electrical line or circuit drawings are up to date and changes identified. Evidence that an up-to-date, documented scheme of maintenance is in place and that there is a Latoto procedure in place for that equipment. Remember, lock out, tag out, try out. That any electrical supply cables, which could have been subject to physical damage, have been protected. You will only be allowed to work on equipment if you're an authorised and competent electrician. Life-saving rule number five, site transport, including rail operations. Mobile plant and vehicles are a significant risk to the safety of personnel on any site and their operation needs to be properly controlled. As a contractor working on a tarmac site, you must work in accordance with the site vehicle and transport rules. Always use the pedestrian routes provided on site. Only operate mobile plant that you're trained and authorised to use. Never use mobile phones or handheld radios whilst driving or operating any equipment. Complete and document specified daily checks before operating mobile plant. Wear seat belts when travelling in an item of mobile plant. Make sure people are physically separated from unsecured material and equipment. Never leave the ignition key in an unattended vehicle. Do not break traffic rules or speed limits. Never approach a vehicle without making eye contact. You may have seen them, make sure that they have seen you. Remember, vehicle towing is prohibited unless an appropriate towing attachment is used. Always wear high visibility clothing in an operational site that is orange or yellow and compliant with EN471. It must be maintained and in a serviceable condition. High-vis bibs or vests must not be used by operational or maintenance personnel as they can become open or loose and present a hazard. People have become entangled with machinery and equipment and suffered serious injuries as a result. Make sure there is a documented process for the routine testing of brakes on mobile plant. For rail operations, whilst working on a tarmac site, you must be trackside trained, authorised and competent to work within the operational area. You must be familiar with the site risk assessment and method of work for the operation and fully comply with it at all times. Work on or near water presents risks for mobile plant or vehicles and pedestrians. It is only permitted when there is a specific risk assessment and safe system of work in place authorised by the tarmac site manager. Those working to the risk assessment must be competent and authorised to undertake the work. Life-saving rule number six, forklift safety. Forklift trucks can be dangerous and there have been fatal and serious incidents involving them. Before anyone operates a forklift truck on a tarmac site, the operational speed must be restricted through the vehicle management system to a forward speed of 16 kilometres an hour, that's 10 miles an hour, and a reverse speed of 5 kilometres an hour, that's 3 miles an hour. The blue light system must be fitted as a control measure. A 360 visibility assessment must be completed to ensure that the operator can clearly see around the forklift truck during normal operations and during the hours of darkness. 
As a minimum, all forklift trucks must be fitted with a seat belt, a cab top flashing beacon, a reverse warning alarm, a convex mirror, the blue light system. Before the start of each shift, a documented pre-start check must be completed. And only personnel who are competent and authorised can operate a forklift truck. Life-saving rule number seven, mobile phones. Using a mobile phone in any mode while working on an operational site presents a significant risk and has resulted in serious incidents. You're distracted and often unaware of your surroundings. You must fully comply with the site rules for the use of mobile phones. Never use a mobile phone in any mode while operating mobile plant or while walking around an operational site. Life-saving rule number eight. The management of contract transport, heavy goods vehicles on the public roads. If you operate a heavy goods vehicle on behalf of Tarmac, you will be required to comply with the requirements of this rule and you will have them explained to you. Life-saving rule number nine, construction project safety. It's important that construction projects are adequately planned and resourced to make sure all the significant risks are properly managed both during and after the project has been completed. For these types of projects, the following requirements are mandatory. A specific falls prevention plan must be prepared where working at height is required. Access to the project site shall be effectively controlled to prevent unauthorised persons entering. A vehicle and pedestrian management plan shall be developed for the project site. Groundwork shall be well planned, specifically all underground services, electricity, gas etc, must be located and marked before excavation works commence as part of a permit to work to undertake groundworks. Checks should be made to ensure the structural integrity of temporary works. All piling works should be planned and carried out to reduce the exposure of workers to falling into openings, as well as injury through contact with plant. Lifting and slinging activities, including the use of cranes, shall be well planned and managed by competent personnel. Electrical works. All electrical panels should be secured and inspected before use by a competent person. All electrical circuits must be protected by either an earth leakage circuit breaker, a residual current device or a ground fault circuit interrupter, fitted at source and routinely checked. The risk from electrical fires must be assessed. Only competent and authorised electricians may be used on the project and only electrical tools complying with GS38 shall be used for testing of electrical circuits. At Tarmac we are committed to ensuring that our activities don't put at risk the health of employees, contractors, hauliers and members of the public. Occupational health shall be well managed, specifically taking account of noise, dust, hand arm vibration syndrome, hazardous materials and the importance of COSH, manual handling, drugs and alcohol, PPE, first aid provision, demolition, for example asbestos removal, confined spaces. Noise. Wherever practical, select equipment with a noise level below 80 decibels. Anything above this and hearing protection should be provided and worn. When someone is wearing his or her hearing protection, you should be wearing yours. Damage to hearing builds up over time and the effects last a lifetime. Dust can be hazardous to health, specifically respirable crystalline silica. Where dust emissions cannot be fully controlled by the use of extraction or wet suppression, a dust mask must be used. If you're required to wear a dust mask, your employer should have arranged for you to have a face fit test to ensure the mask is working effectively for you. 
Remember, if you change the type of mask, you will require the face fit test again. If the primary control measures, such as dust extraction, don't appear to be working, please report this to site management immediately. Hand arm vibration syndrome, HAVS. Equipment such as jackhammers, an air wrench or grinder can cause vibration. If you're overexposed to this vibration, you can suffer the effects of HAVS. In the worst case, it can cause a disabling injury. Always follow the controls specified in the risk assessment and safe system of work and report any changes in the level of vibration felt, as this may be a sign that the equipment needs maintaining. Exposure should be avoided, and if it can't be avoided, at least kept to the lowest practical limit. Trigger time must be recorded. Kosh. No hazardous substance should be bought onto site without the site manager's authorization. Where this has been given, then your employer should have completed an assessment and communicated to you the controls that are required when using or handling a hazardous substance. This should also include disposal, if required, and emergency considerations. Every effort should be made to substitute a hazardous substance for a non-hazardous or less hazardous substance. Avoid skin contact with oils, greases, diesel, resins and cement. Always follow the controls specified by your employer and if anything changes, stop what you're doing and speak to your line manager. Remember. Change contaminated clothing and observe good hygiene, such as washing your hands before you eat. Do not work with a hazardous substance that has not been assessed by your employer. Manual handling. A considerable number of injuries, sprains and strains and long-term back problems are caused by poor manual handling techniques. If possible, manual handling should be avoided. Use mechanical means to lift items such as sack trolleys or drum trolleys. Remember, if you're not trained, don't lift. All manual handling activities must be suitably assessed. Drugs and alcohol. At Tarmac, we have a zero tolerance for drugs and alcohol in the workplace. Any individual found to have drugs or alcohol in their system will be removed from site. We do carry out random testing across the business and if you are working on a tarmac site, you could be included. If you're involved in an incident on site, you may also be tested. Remember, drugs and alcohol can stay in your system for some time. If you're in doubt, let your employer know and don't turn up on site. PPE is the last level of control in the hierarchy of controls. It's often provided as a secondary line of defence in case the primary control fails. Mandatory requirements on a tarmac site are a hard hat with a chin strap if working at height, safety glasses or prescription safety glasses for those that have to wear glasses in the workplace, high visibility overalls or jacket and trousers, high ankle lace boots with metatarsal protection, the following should be readily available to wear as required by site rules, site signage or the risk assessment or safe system of work. Hearing protection, dust mask or gloves. Other specialist PPE may be required as part of a task, such as a medium impact face visor when grinding or safety goggles when discharging dust at high pressure. Make sure you wear and maintain your PPE as instructed by your employer. Replace it when it's badly worn or damaged. Poorly used or maintained PPE will offer little or no protection to you. Always wear the correct and specified PPE. It could prevent serious injury. It is important that we all know how to locate or summon first aid if required. Your tarmac site sponsor will provide this information as part of your local site induction. Please let us know if you or any of your team are trained first aiders. Any first aid administered must be reported to the site manager immediately and recorded in the site accident book. Familiarise yourself with the site's emergency procedures or any emergency procedures associated with the work you're doing. 
Sufficient welfare facilities within easy access of the project site shall be provided to include hot and cold water and, where practical or required, showers should be included. Fire and emergency procedures shall be considered with the priority on prevention and escape. Life-saving rule number 10. Road surfacing, repair operations. Road surfacing, maintenance or repair is an area with significant potential risk. Not only are there hazards of moving vehicles, machinery and the handling of hot material, you're often close to live and moving public traffic. Specific risk control measures are required. Controlling reversing vehicles. HGV delivery or collection vehicles must be instructed not to reverse unless they are under the direct control of a banksman, who must be identified by wearing the designated orange jacket or vest with the word banksman on the back. All vehicles delivering aggregates, asphalt or concrete must be fitted with a working CCTV rear view camera, audible reverse warning alarm, white reversing lights, amber beacons, clocks side scan, side underrun bars. All mobile plant or vehicle drivers must maintain a safety zone in the path of travel between the items of mobile plant or vehicle they're driving and any pedestrian. For tarmac, the safety zones are five metres in the direct line of travel of any vehicle or item of plant and two metres to the side of the vehicle or item of plant. This is known as the five plus two working zone. You're allowed access to the paver augers only for the purpose of hand shoveling, testing or back casting of material. Work adjacent to overhead services must only be carried out following the completion of a specific risk assessment and safe system of work developed in line with HSC guidance GS6. Excavation work must only be carried out following completion of a survey for buried services and the development of a job-specific safe system of work. Workers must be protected from both the risk of a trench collapsing and the risk of falling whilst working in or around the excavation. Each project must have a specifically designed traffic management system based on a risk assessment. As well as the issues around live traffic control, each system must include pedestrian management controls. Life-saving rule number 11. Lifting operations. Serious accidents have occurred during lifting operations, often involving the use of mobile cranes and gantry cranes. Contractors must ensure the following before working on a tarmac site. Cranes, lifting equipment and accessories must have current, up-to-date inspections. If they don't, don't use them. Always check. Only competent and authorised personnel are permitted to plan and undertake lifting operations. All lifting equipment must have its safe working load clearly visible. All gantry crane controls must be labelled. All gantry crane controls must be risk assessed for the possibility of an inadvertent contact by the operator with the controls. As a minimum, this will involve a barrier around them to prevent inadvertent contact with the crane joystick. All lifting hooks must be fitted with safety latches. When cranes are used, a clearly marked exclusion zone must be identified and established. Never move a load above people or position yourself below a load. Life-saving rule number 12. Working at height, working near water, falling objects. Falls from height and falling objects have accounted for a number of fatal accidents in recent years. Remember, working at height should be avoided if possible. Before starting work on a tarmac site, contractors must ensure the following. A specific risk assessment and safe system of work must be in place before the work proceeds and must cover an emergency situation. 
A permit to work has been completed. Man grids must be in place on all hopper or bin openings. Maintaining full bins is not adequate. Consider the use of safety nets installed by a competent contractor. If you have to work near a quarry edge, a full prevention system must be used and it must be operated in accordance with the site procedure. Ladders are to be used for access only, be uniquely identified, kept secure until authorised and inspected prior to use. A register of ladders must be available. To prevent foot injuries from falling objects, a safety boot providing metatarsal protection shall be provided. Work near water is defined as work where people may have to work within two metres of water. Vehicles may have to work within four metres and where the water depth is in excess of a metre. Where this is the case, a specific risk assessment and safe system of work to cover the activity must be in place, taking into account any special competences and equipment training required. There must be someone present at all times who can instigate the emergency procedure. Life-saving rule number 13. Work in confined space. The management of confined spaces is essential to remove the risk of serious injury or ill health and contractors must ensure that the following is in place before working in a confined space. A specific risk assessment and safe system of work is prepared for the confined space, including a detailed emergency procedure that includes the rescue plan. A permit to work in the confined space has been completed. Only personnel competent and authorised to work in the specific confined space shall complete the work. But most importantly, is there a practical alternative to working in the confined space? If so, use it. Life-saving rule number 14. Loan or remote working. Loan working refers to a situation where a person is the only person on site at an operation. Loan working is not permitted without the authorisation of a site manager. Remote working relates to a situation where a person is not the only person on site, but they're working remotely from others. For remote or loan working, a specific risk assessment and safe system of work should be completed and must assess the health of the person involved, any means of communication and the work that the person may or may not do while undertaking the task. Specific training may be required, for example, the use of specialist communication equipment, such as a lone working communication device. Life-saving rule number 15. Explosive safety. Life-saving rule number 16. Process safety, occupational health, Housekeeping. This is a broad-based rule covering the required safety management principles around process safety. Rule 16 deals with the following. Prevention of contact with hot material, gases and surfaces. Prevention of fire and explosions, including the prevention of overpressurization in vessels. Process change management. Storage handling and process use of hazardous substances. We have already mentioned occupational health previously and we'll be discussing housekeeping later. And you'll be advised on a site-by-site -site basis of any additional specific requirements regarding this rule. Complete compliance with the life-saving rules is non-negotiable. If you're not sure about any of them, please speak to the tarmac manager responsible for you whilst you're on site. Only contractors with the required training, knowledge and experience are allowed to work on a tarmac site. Never do anything if you're unsure 
as the outcome could be disastrous. As well as the 16 life-saving rules, Tarmac has a number of standards to manage high-risk activities on site. Tarmac managers will regularly refer to these standards when undertaking those activities on their sites and will review your work against these standards as well. Site managers will advise you of any specific Tarmac standard requirement that are applicable for work you do on a Tarmac site. All contractors working on national contracting sites must hold the correct competency for the task they're about to undertake or the plant or vehicle they're about to operate. For high-risk activities such as working at height, working in a confined space, excavations, working near overhead cables, hot work, work on certain electrical installations, work on bitumen systems, work on pressure systems, then a permit to work will be required. This is a process that enables specific checks to be completed and recorded before work is allowed to start. Only those named on the permit will be allowed to proceed with the task. If anything changes, stop and review what needs to happen for the work to continue safely. Any changes must be recorded on the risk assessment and safe systems of work and must be communicated to tarmac site management before work continues. Where there is a risk of fire from the work you are doing, then the risk assessment and safe systems of work will set out the controls required to mitigate the possibility. If a fire does break out, you need to know what action you can take, where your escape route is and where the assembly point is. If you have not been trained to use a fire extinguisher, then don't. When tackling a fire with an extinguisher, don't take risks. All hot work is subject to a permit to work, including a fire watch for a specified time after the hot work has been completed. There's a no smoking policy at all of our sites other than in the designated areas. These will be pointed out to you by the site manager. Both Tarmac and your employer will be doing everything possible to prevent a fire from occurring. A tidy site is a safe site. Always maintain a clean and well-ordered work area. Trailing leads can easily become a trip hazard. Remember to remove any waste as soon as you can. Avoid presenting a hazard to other people on site. Make sure that you comply with all the site signage. It's there for your safety. Only use plant and equipment that you are competent and authorised to use. Always inspect the equipment before use. Don't use it if any defects are identified and report this to your supervisor after removing the equipment from use. Portable electrical appliances such as electric drills and grinders must have a current PAT test in place. Tarmac is proactive and proud of the work that we do to protect the environment. We develop close relationships with the local community and need your help to maintain them. Dust emissions must be controlled. Fuel and oil stored in bunded locations. Minimise environmental noise by reducing noise levels emitted by tools and equipment. Minimise any disturbance caused by lighting. Waste is recycled or disposed of responsibly under duty of care. Prevent pollution and wastage from entering watercourses. Contractors need to understand our aims and work with us so we can be, and remain, a responsible neighbour. All incidents, however minor, must be reported immediately, whether they affected you directly or not. Tarmac and your employer can then complete an investigation promptly and correct the reason for the incident occurring. We are all responsible for site safety and looking out for each other. The site of an actual incident should be made safe without disturbing the site too much. Leave tools and equipment as they were at the time of the incident. Remember, learning, no repeats. We must all report near hits or safety observations and incidents.
Today's near hit or safety observation could be tomorrow's incident. The 16 life-saving rules and the principles outlined in this video are there for a reason, to keep us all safe and healthy. There is no job so important that it should be carried out if there are risks to health and safety. Please stay safe on our sites and always ask if you're not sure. So remember, work safe, home safe.